This video today is about being successful in the fitness field. And what I mean by that is there's many different avenues to make money in the fitness field. In any field, but really the fitness field. And the first thing and probably the safest thing is being a personal trainer and working for a big box gym. So let's say you're out of college, you got a little bit of anatomy courses, maybe you get a certification with Nesta or NASM, National Academy of Sports Medicine, or Apex, or ACE, or all these different certifications you can get. You get a certification or you go to a little bit of schooling and you get out of college and you can work for these box gyms and you can get paid something. That's probably the safest an easiest way you don't make as much money as you could but it is the safest and easiest way second of all you can work for a studio or work for a gym that basically you could work independent for them however they have it set up you can do um, you also can be a trainer that goes to people's houses and trains them but here's the thing there's a lot of liability. You have to make sure you have your insurance. And you got to make sure you have a lot of liability in case anything would happen or someone would say uh, something that wasn't true or that you advanced towards them or whatnot. Um, that all plays a part in uh, you being successful when you go to people's houses and train them. But you can, nonetheless, if you know them well and you feel that you have a good poor with them, and that way you can do that as well. Another thing you could do is social media. Social media is great for making money in the health field. Why? Because it is you connect to so many people. And whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, Twitter, um, Snapchat, whatever it may be, live, whatever it may be, people can get more volume of people watching them quicker than they ever have ever. Back in the old days, they used to have business cards that you used to just pass out and you used to have business cards that you would give to people and so on and so forth. And that was that. And you would have to wait until something came about that. But now, you have so many different avenues that people can honestly get clients or uh, customers or people that follow them rel relatively pretty quick with social media social media but that's another good avenue of how to make it in the fitness field another way is for for me personally I have been a trainer for 15 years personal trainer I own my own gym I actually own my own studio. It's more like a private studio, personal training studio. Not private, but personal training studio. And what we do is we do what's called a la carte, okay? We have, basically, we have chiropractic. We have personal training. We have stretching, sports stretching, like PNF. We have um, show prep. We have nutrition. So we have all these different add amenities but it's like a la carte so you don't have to pay for a membership you just pay for what you need so uh, we have a lot of customers that go to LA Fitness uh, Lifetime Fitness uh, different gyms around the area Planet Fitness they go to the gyms around the area but they might not have that personalized attention of training like we do at our place a business so my business is called the Flame Fitness if you want to, look it up. But that's what we do. And um, we do well with it. It works. It's a niche. Um, is it going to be, are you going to win the whole niche and everything? Well, no. But the key in being successful in the fitness industry, too, is finding your niche. Okay, what is your niche? What population are you going to target to to further your growth? Okay in the fitness industry. You have to know that, okay? Are you gonna be a big box gym and you're gonna compete with all the other big box gyms? Well, fine, do you have enough financing? 
Do you have investors? Are you going to go through a bank? Um, do you have enough for advertisement? A lot of people open up a gym, but they don't know how much it costs for the advertisement. People don't just come in the door just because there's a big gym erected. There has to be a reason to come in the door, right? And so it does make a difference in being nice and fancy. That all makes a difference. But in, in the end, you still have to bring people in with deals and so on and so forth and advertisement that you have to spend lots of money on. Um, my gym, same thing. I have to advertise a lot to do something, but I advertise a lot outside the community instead of people walking in my gym, right? So that's how I have to do. That's what I have to do. That's how I have to do it. It's the way it works. Um, so those are a couple options that you have. Another thing is if you do own a gym, a couple things for success is number one, okay, when you get leads, and let's say you put lead boxes or lead thing, lead sign-up slips in various areas in town, and the companies say, yeah, sure, you can do this, that's fine, and you put these lead boxes there or sign-up sheets, make sure you call them, okay? So I do not want you to leave a voice message because the odds of them calling you back and actually becoming clients are slim. It can happen if they're really wanting to, to do it, but you should talk to them personally. Or a lot of companies, they send a mass email out because it's the easiest way to do it. No, get on the phone, work a little bit, and call. And if you don't get anybody home, you just take a little pen and you say, call, but did not receive, did not talk to anybody. That way you can make the call over again if there's no one you talk to. And you keep calling until you actually talk to each and every individual that's on your sign-up sheet. It will make your percentages go up of people coming in your door if you own, if you're a business owner like me that owns a gym. It's very important. Another thing is, is you have to um, if someone says, I do not want to want to train right now, or I do not want to come into your facilities, I'm not interested in it, still keep the phone number, still keep the lead, and in a few weeks or months, whatever, call back and ask them. But before you l let the phone just hang up on them, okay, before you hang up on them, ask them, okay, well, do you have any goals? And maybe they say, well, I'm not really interested in talking right now. Okay, all right. So you call back in a month or so and you say, hey, I talked to you not too long ago. I told you we opened up a gym, new gym in the community and all. And we're doing a great job and all this. But I wanted to ask you something. How's your goals going with fitness? And don't even do a sales approach. Just ask them how they're doing, Okay hang up the phone not even saying get in the gym just hang up the phone and say can I call you back again you might if I check if you're and call you back again and see if you're doing something about your fitness a lot of them will say no but some of them more than you think will say actually yes sure yeah give me a call because you're not pushing the sales thing on them okay the minute you push sales on the phone you lost the sale. You have to get them in the door. When you get them in the door, then you can be a little bit more salesy. But even if there's nothing there right then and there, you can always give another session. Okay? You give somebody in for a free session. Boom. They don't buy. Oh, here's another free session to try it because I feel you're going to love this. And be confident. No one can sell something they don't believe in. All right? It's honesty. Okay? If you're going to be a good salesperson in anything, and especially owning a gym or being a salesperson in a gym trying to make money, whatever it may be, you have to believe in what you sell. If you don't believe in what you're sell, selling, how are you going to sell it to that person? You're not. You have to absolutely, positively believe in what you're trying to say and what you're trying to sell. And you'll sell it all day long when they walk in the door. My closing percentage, or no joke, is probably 99.9%. .9%, and the problem I have is getting people... A month, as many people in the doors you have those big box gyms you know so 
I'm never going to compete as far as that many walk-ins that you get in a daily day. You just can't compete. So that's fine. So, but whatever, but whoever walks in that door, they're going to usually buy something when they sit down with me. And it, and it's not because I'm trying to be pushy or salesy. It's because I believe in what I sell. And same thing with you. If you believe in what you're selling, if you're in a sales part of the business, in the fitness, you can sell it all day long if you believe it. If you don't believe it and you think, oh, this money's expensive and when they put this money down, it's expensive. And if you feel it's expensive, they're going to feel it's expensive. If you feel it's a good value and it's worth all, every penny of it, they're going to feel it's a good value and it's worth every penny of it. That's how it works. Truly, that's how it works. And that's important. Another thing that's important is, you know, posting things on YouTube, you know, getting your name out there, getting recognized, like we said, of social media. Another big thing of uh, making money in the fitness industry. And uh, I can go on and on and on about how to be successful, but those are a few simple ideas that you can take. I don't want to make this video too long. I want to make it short and sweet. If you like it, please subscribe and uh, I can make some more videos about uh, being successful in the fitness industry and uh, how what it takes and uh, how you lay it out because I've done it and I've failed at it and I've done well with it. So uh, I know what works and what doesn't work and um, I'm here to show you. Have a good day.